they have counsel. That's what it is in the Constitution. But over the years, it's become known as the Governor's Council, but it's technically still the Executive Council. Dear counselors, I'm pleased to nominate Alex J. Valderrama. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, you did. To the position of Clerk Magistrate of the Eastern Division Housing Court, I submit the nomination for the advice and consent of the Executive Council pursuant to Part 2, Chapter 2 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I'm enclosing the nominee's resume for your convenience. Sincerely, Charles D. Baker. The vice is the Honorable Robert L. Lewis. Uh, with that, I would ask you to uh, uh, tell us who you're brought today. Uh, good morning, uh, Councilor Jubinville. Uh, thank you uh, for having me here today in the Governor's Council. Today I have uh, my wife, uh, Jocelyn uh, Valderrama, my daughters, Karina and Brittany Valderrama, my mother-in-law, uh, Maria Aponte, my uh, friend and colleague, Ben Adienka, uh, the Deputy Court Administrator, Mike Neville, uh, the Assistant, uh, the Acting Clerk Magistrate, Jose Maiso, my, uh, almost like my father. He's uh, been with me all my life in, uh, in all very important matters. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, we will call on your witnesses. Uh, Jose Maso. Is that cane one of those canes that has a sword in it? You know, Counselor, I'm, I'm asked that every time I go to the airport. He'll say, well, stop me, ask me to unscrew it slowly. And at times I'm asked if it might not be a weapon, or might there be some rum in there? And so therefore I've got to slide play that, mm, I'll keep you guessing, but no, neither of the two. I used to make canes with a, you could put a 22 round uh, shell in and hit it and a trigger would come out. You could use it as a, and this was back years and years ago. Well, I'm going to add that to the front four or five. Oh, you don't want to do that. You'll get in trouble. Nice. To defend you. Nice sit here, please. Thank you. All right. So you've got the floor. Thank you so much, Counselor, and good morning to everyone. It's an honor for me to be here, and I want to thank Alex for asking me to uh, be part of this ceremony. Uh, if my wife Divina were able to be here, she would be the one sitting here, to be honest with you, because it's through my wife that Alex came into our life uh, several decades ago. And I want to say, as I walked into the State House, I remember the number of times that uh, Alex, growing up in the South End, along with our adopted son Tony, would uh, join me for rides, and we would ride up Beacon Street, and we would be talking about life and about being men and about what that meant, the responsibility as he was growing up. But I want to say the resume that you may have and you may have seen and the colleagues you're going to hear from work tell the story about what he does. It tells the story also about where he lives. It tells the story about his trajectory professionally. But what I want to share in the one minute I have is who he is as a person because the story is beyond the trappings of materialism, of a house that's beautiful, of a job that pays well. It is a young man who grew up very humble um, in the Boston uh, public housing developments, including Cathedral, which is right there in the South End, which is the way that I got to know him. My wife, Divina, is a product of that housing development. And she and Alex's mother were very close. They were like sisters, Elena. May she rest in peace. And growing up, Alex had a very good friendship with my wife's nephew, Tony, who we later adopted. And when we bought our home in Hyde Park, we would bring everyone to the neighborhood, to our uh, home, so that they can enjoy the trappings of what we had, which was an above ground pool. And Alex was one of those who would join Tony to come over to the house. So we got to know Alex more than Tony's friend. He was more like Tony's brother. And by being Tony's brother, by extension, he became our son, if you will. And so we were honored that he would spend so much time with us and that Elena would allow him and his sister and his younger brother, Benny, to spend that time with us. That was quality time. But it gave me an opportunity to get to know him as a child, get to see him grow as an adolescent, see him grow as a young man, and then see him who he is today as the man, father, husband, and colleague, the colleague to others at the courthouse. But I will say to you, the story of Alex is one that many of us have seen of success based on taking advantage of every opportunity that has been given to him, taking advantage of every person who has come into his 
hemisphere as far as connecting with him and being mentors and being champions for him. He has not wasted those opportunities. He knows where he comes from, therefore his humbleness, but at the same time, he is very understanding that he has a role to play to be a servant for all and that he is playing a role of being a model of someone who comes from a humble background to be able to do the things that he's been asked to do and his family's testimony to this effort on his part. I'm getting emotional because uh, I'm talking to you as if this were my son. And so therefore, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity and the love we have for him and the respect and admiration goes deep. So thank, thank you. you for testifying. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Okay, Benjamin. Thank you. May I sit? Yes, you may. Thank you, Council. Notebooks and papers. I hope it's important. Very brief. Good morning, Councilmen and Councilwomen. My name is Ben Adienka. I have the pleasure and honor of serving as the Deputy Court Administrator for the Housing Court. In my current role, I have the pleasure and honor of working with Chief Justice Timothy Sullivan and leading the department. I began my tenure in 2014 in the Housing Court. Prior to that, I practiced law within the Housing Court. Let's talk about Alex for a second. I'm here to testify and ask for your support for Alex Valderrama's candidacy for Clerk Magistrate of the Eastern Housing Court. Alex is someone who I've known professionally over a decade. I thank the governor, the lieutenant governor, chief legal counsel, executive director, uh, Lauren Green, executive director, Emily Gauthier, administrative secretary, Valerie McCarthy for their respective role in vigorously vetting Alex for this important position. I'd also like to take one moment, if I may, to remember Robert Lewis, who was the former clerk magistrate and first African-American to serve in that role. This is an important role um, that Alex will hopefully get your vote of support on. As you can see, Alex is a father as well as a husband. His wife is here, Jocelyn, Karina, and Brittany, his daughters as well. As you've heard from the prior um, individual who's testified in support. He was born in a single family household. Alex did not have a father to guide him. However, at one point, he and his mother, as you heard, lived in subsidized housing and even experienced homelessness. Despite those challenges, Alex persevered. And this is why he's the right person for this role. He has a keen understanding of the challenges litigants face who walk through the court doors. Alex also embraces his Latinidad. And if you were so inclined to vote in support of Alex, he would be the first Latin American to have the role of clerk magistrate in the housing court's history, something that I'm proud to be a part of, and I'm hoping that you all will support. Alex has worked for the housing court for over two decades. In that time, he's helped landlords, tenants, attorneys, code enforcement officials, constables, et cetera, navigate the extreme difficult challenges of housing. Prior to his tenure, he's worked at the Boston Housing Authority for approximately five years. And in 2017, he became the chief housing specialist of the Eastern Division, one of our busiest courts in the Commonwealth. Not only has he served his professional career and devoted it to public service, most of his professional career was dedicated to helping the residents of Suffolk County. During our most challenging time, Alex stepped up to lead some of the court's operations, particularly at the height of the pandemic, introducing changes in procedures and processes. Not only did he work through those issues, he did it and helped several litigants, landlords and tenants, not only preserve tenancies, but also access rental assistance funds. Indeed, Alex has seen the growth and the evolution of the housing court. Again, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to remind you how important it is for the judiciary to reflect the communities they serve. In conclusion, I respectfully ask for your vote in support of Alex Valderrama's appointment as Eastern Housing Court's Clerk Magistrate. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Julian Bell, for your guidance uh, and being here today. Thanks. Thank the other counselors that I've spoken to uh, provided me advice and uh, information. Uh, 
being here today. I want to thank uh, Valerie Murphy from the uh, Governor's Council, Judicial Nominating Committee, Executive Director Lauren Green Patino, Deputy Director Emily Gauthier, General Counsel Bob Ross, the Judicial Nominating Committee, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, and Governor Charlie Baker for having the confidence and faith to nominate me to the position of Clerk Magistrate of the Eastern House of Court. I am truly grateful. I also want to thank uh, my wife of 32 years, my daughter, my daughters, uh, their support and positive energy, my mom, who is an angel in heaven, uh, watching over me and guiding me, uh, uh, my you know, friends and family, Jose Divina, who uh, gave me guidance and gave me an, uh, an example of who I am today. Um, I've spent time all over the city of uh, Boston, uh, uh, living from house to house. My mother was a victim of domestic violence. Um, I've seen these things. I've seen some terrible things, uh, but that hasn't stopped me. I continue to uh, go forward and, and, and learn and uh, be the person that I'm here today. Um, as a clerk magistrate, I will continue my passion to help people from all walks of life backgrounds and provide them with information to help them navigate the court to understand why they are at the court and what can be done to prevent them from returning in the future. Uh, for that reason, I ask for your appointment of the Eastern Housing Court. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Council Devaney, time starts. I had an accident in front of me. That's why I was late. <laughs> Like, I'm glad you will, though. Yeah. Always something happening on the way. <laughs> um, so you're calling on me to call me to question you? Is that what it is? Yeah, I follow. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for all the time that you afforded me. I really appreciate it. And I have to say it publicly that um, 23 years, I have never met a nominee with a background like yours. Just, I, I can't tell you how much I respect you for what you've done with your life. Um, you know, we, no matter what, where we come from, we have some sort of a family, someone that you, that supports you, that gets you through, but you didn't have that. And it was something within yourself that you've done this and, and you've come to this. And um, I congratulate you for what you've done in your life. Um, I don't want to embarrass you, but um, it is public, and, and you have said, you know, said it in your JNC that, um, you know, I can't even imagine that mother leaves, father leaves, and you're and you've gone to so many schools, you've lived with so many people, and never really had someone that you could depend on that would take care of you that would ask you, what do you want to do with your life? And you did it. I, I just can't say enough about it. And you know, I was thinking after I met with you that with your background, it wouldn't be unusual for someone in that young situation to get into drugs or alcohol or, or whatever. And um, you did it by yourself. I usually don't talk like this at, at, at a hearing, but um, I was so impressed and uh, it really, it almost made me cry to think of what you had to go through, because I can't imagine to be abandoned by my parents, no matter what the circumstances are. So anyway, so having said that, um, your, your uh, resume is so completely different than anything I've ever seen in 23 years, because I never knew your job. I had to learn, and I read your JNC, and I asked people, and then I met with you for hours, and I found out all about that. And so really, um, I can't think of anyone more experienced to be a clerk magistrate. I mean, you work with a clerk magistrate every day. So I've done all the talking. So now you tell me about how you got into this profession, and how you moved up, and why you want to be a clerk magistrate. Thank you. Um, so, you know, growing up in public housing afforded the opportunity uh, to learn about, uh, I moved to different locations, but uh, I was afforded the opportunity to be employed by the Boston Housing Authority. And uh, 
you know, just helping people uh, go through some of the things that not go through some of the things that I went through. Uh, so that was always my goal. And uh, I would visit the court and um, I was able to uh, obtain a job there as a housing specialist. And uh, as a housing specialist, um, you know, it was helping people, alternative dispute resolution, uh, uh, trying to keep people from being evicted, uh, from being homeless, uh, something that, like I said, I've been all over the place. So, um, you know, it's not something that a, a child should have to deal, deal with. Uh, so, you know, gradually, uh, you know, I help people. Um, and that was always my goal and my passion, where, you know, give people information so they can make better decisions. Um, and by doing that, uh, I was promoted uh, several times. Um, I'm working, uh, I work great with the clerk magistrate, with the administrative offices, with uh, different community groups, um, because, you know, in essence, it's a lot of people who don't have, uh, have knowledge of what's out there to help. Um, there's a lot of people out there that don't have the support. Uh, so you know, I try to give some people. Well, I can't tell you how disappointed I am that there's only two other counselors besides the chair here to hear your story. Um, tell me, um, you empathize with these people because you've been there. So um, tell me how you how you do, how you empathize with them, how you can put yourself in their shoes. Well, I, I, I basically uh, tell them that, um, you know, God's not going to put them in a way that you can't overcome. So there's a solution to everything. Uh, so I, I, I just listen, uh, listen to their stories and uh, try to give them hope. That, you know, there's some positive things out there. Well, in talking with you and learning so much about your personal life, I think it was your faith that got you through because you didn't have someone that you could depend on to get you through. And, you know, and so I, I really admire you. So tell me, um, you know, we talked about what type of learning curve would it be? And it really isn't much for you to learn because you've been here every day. Tell us about that. Yeah, there, there isn't. Um, I'm a problem solver, I'm solution oriented. So. Most of the people that come through the court have disputes. Um, so they're looking for someone to listen and uh, try to resolve their disputes. So, um, you know, entries and filings and well versed on procedures and uh, different, uh, the different laws and different agencies out there to assist people. Well, as I said, I, I can't say enough about how much I admire you to, to know um, you know, we just know, you know, I used to come home from school and I used to tell my, my mother was there. I mean, you didn't have that. And you didn't know the next day where you'd be, who you'd be living with and where you'd be and, and going to different schools and still you did succeed. So it was something within you. I, I have so much confidence in you. I really do. And um, I, I just admire you for you, for you know, to grow up without, you know, parental, uh, you know, uh, guidance and, and just being... I, I can't say enough, just to be put here and there and everywhere, you know, with no place that you grew up or with the family, you know, support. Um, I'm, I'm just so we have some family mentors, you, you, so yeah, yeah. That's right. Thank God. Course, you're going yeah. to different places. But look what you've done. You have a wonderful family and wife and, yes. and, and what you've done with your life. I mean, that really is the American dream, isn't it? Yes. Really. I mean, when you think of Puerto Rico and, 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 and some of the relatives that you have there and the lives they're living and what you've done. So you must, you, you know, your wife and everyone must be very proud of you. And so, um, as I said, I've never talked like this at a hearing, but I, I was so overwhelmed with hearing about your life and what you've done. But as I said, in two or three years, you're the first one that has come before me with your experience. So you have been pre preparing how many years? Uh, well, 23 years at the yeah. court. I've been in public safety and public in public sector for quite yeah. some time, yes, even before that. Yeah, so I mean, all of that has been preparing you. Uh, usually people, when they go to clerk magistrate, don't have that experience. Some of them haven't worked in the court even, you know? So um, I'm just so pleased that you got through. 
and um, that you'll be in, in, now. Will you be in a certain court, or is it circuit house? Or it, it would. It's not a circuit. It's a east the Eastern Housing Court. It's here, uh, Suffolk County. Oh, very good. Parts of Middlesex. Parts oh, that's of. That's wonderful. Well, they're very lucky to have you, and they must all know you from your, you know, experience. So um, I, I, I'm so happy for you, and I wish you all good luck and health. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilor Kennedy. I think you've made a terrible career choice. <laughs> you stayed in the house painting business. <laughs> you would have made a lot more money, less stress. Uh, I've gotten a lot of phone calls about you, quite a few. Um, it, I, it sounds to me like you should be getting a same foot instead of a clerk's job. Uh, Judge Sullivan called me this morning. I had a long talk with him. Uh, my friend uh, Judge Kelleher, that I've known for decades upon decades upon decades, called me about you. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, I'm not a housing court guy. Uh, I don't. It's not my cup of tea. You know, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. Uh, so I don't know all the intricacies of it, but when the people that I respect a lot, uh, so much respect for you, I, I'm going to have to vote for you. Thank you so much. I will be voting for you next week, and I wish you a lot of luck. And I hope to never see you, because I never want to vote. Mr. Apollo. Thank you, Counselor. Good morning. Good morning. Um, in housing court, you have a lot of self-represented litigants, right? Yes. And so uh, already we've heard a lot about your empathy and your ability to kind of try to get people in the right place to be navigating that. But what, how do you self-represented litigants, what's the support, the procedural support? And I understand you have the expertise. How, how do you approach helping them navigate the system itself once they're in the right mindset? Um, so we have several agencies uh, within the court. We have the Court Service Center, and preservation program, you know, Justice Bridge, depending on uh, the situation. Uh, but uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, they just want someone to listen to them. Yeah. And you know, I, I repeat a lot of the times, uh, you know, you know, what's the problem? You know, what would you like the judge to do? What's the solution? Uh, you know, we can dwell on problems forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, so you have a lot of people dealing with housing insecurity or facing evictions sometimes. Yes. It's yes. been in the news over the course of the pandemic, right? And that's yes. been a particular challenge. Yes, yes. Um, uh, we've, we've been grateful for the state of Massachusetts. They've had a lot of funding uh, to prevent people from being displaced for non-payment of rent matters. Um, so that's that's been great. Uh, the federal government stepped in, um, DHCD. Uh, so. Um, it's been great. Is there, are there particular, I was reading through the MCLE, the seminar materials that you included in your application. Are there particular demographics that have been more impacted or have been more impacted traditionally in your course of your career in the housing court when it comes to housing insecurity? Um, yes, I mean, I, I, I mean, is, is a lot of, uh, you know, it depends on, I guess it depends on the division that you're in. Sure. So the community if, that you're yeah. With. So if you're in Boston, you know, depending on the demographics in Boston compared to Worcester or Springfield. Um, sure. But Boston's the biggest place in the state, right? Yeah. So we see get, trends get, in what you in what do you see trends in the course of your career? So so you do see trends. You see sometimes, uh, you know, there's situations with mental health okay. um, that you know get exaggerated. You know, there's more people coming in mental health, whether it's a hoarding situation. Um, cause evictions, um, and then uh, non-payment. During the pandemic, uh, it was non-payment, and we were trying to do everything in our power to prevent displacement and get people the funding necessary. Uh, people that work in hotels that didn't, couldn't work okay. uh, in restaurants. And so in terms of your role, but also like for the public in terms of what Housing Court is doing, because people hear about evictions and uh, trying to assist people in tr transitioning or staying in housing. But like, so um, how are those connections made? Is it your role? Is it your role as a potential, in your potential role? How, how is it your role you've had previously? Is it the judge? Yeah. Who's making those connections? So it's have, especially, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm especially curious around the mental health and substance abuse, which I assume you're seeing a lot of in yes. the worst. I mean, I also assume you're, I don't know how your resources are for dealing with that, but so how does, how are those connections made in the community? So we're, we're, I mean, I, I 
grew up in Boston, so I know a lot of uh, the agencies involved. Um, I worked for the city of Boston for uh, a couple of years, uh, constituent coordinator. Um, so, you know, it, it's taking initiative, to be honest with you. Um, if I recognize a problem, uh, then I reach out to different agencies for assistance. Um, how, how do I get them involved in the court uh, to help out? So um, it's really, you know, taking initiative uh, to reach out to these agencies to uh, come up with some creative solutions. Um, I wanted to ask you also suggestions for improving the administration of the court. And in your application, you mentioned uh, customer service trainings and then employee meetings um, and opportunities for continued education. So I'm guessing I know the answer, but what kind of continuing education do you think staff would benefit from or the court as a whole would benefit from? So, um, I mean, dispute resolution, uh, you know, de-escalating uh, uh, situations with, uh, you know, uh, court users uh, that come in with an anxiety, um, recognizing, uh, you know, uh, mental health signals, um, you know, so, you know, just providing them information that, um, you know, some key uh, factors that would assist them in doing their job better. Um, you know, there's, you know, the frontline workers don't get that, you know, unfortunately. But they're facing it. Exactly. exactly. One's actually facing it. Exactly. So that's, that's my thought process. Um, and, you know, that touches on a point that was clear in all your materials and the people who called me is uh, mediation skill. <laughs> so important in that role, again, with yes. self-represented uh, litigant. And then a final thing I'll say, I, I guess I don't have a question, but to me, representation matters in our justice system. It matters at every step of the way. So, uh, you know, to, I've seen from what I can see and tell that there are communities that are disproportionately represented in the housing court beyond mental health and substance abuse. Um, and so I guess I applaud the governor and I'll echo what one of my colleagues said. I don't always see this isn't it's a it's a pathway to this role that's not the traditional, I guess, quote unquote pathway. Um, and I guess I just applaud the governor for making this nomination. Um, I think you're going to do a great job and I won't iterate what we've heard, but I think um, your understanding of what people in the housing court are going through um, is going to do people very well in the Commonwealth. So thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, uh, what was I going to say to you? Oh, well, your dedication to the housing court is is uh, really something to see. And to me, you, your background is all housing court all the way. And you couldn't ask for a better candidate, in my view. I will be voting for you next week. Thank you. Yes, Councilor. I just wanted to, to say that um, uh, I hope that the chair will read from the letters. We got. Um, well, excuse me. Letters. Excuse me. Excuse me. There yeah. were two letters that were sent in by one by Judge Sullivan, but, uh, Judge Winniak, Chief Justice, and they are going to be put into the your file. I'm not going to read them because you. It's going to go into your file. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, Chief Justice um, Sullivan, I have so much respect for him, and I had the pleasure of voting for him many years ago, and then he became Chief Justice. And, and he talked about how empathetic you are and how you help others, and, and retired uh, uh, Justice Winnick, too. So that says a lot about you. But what I am what I am impressed is that, you know, you've had about 27 years that you have been um, devoted to this, uh, to this focus of helping people and being empathetic. And so um, it, it's not something you just jumped in and said, gee, I think I'd like to be a clerk magistrate. You've earned it the old fashioned way, not politically. You earned it because you're qualified and you're experienced. And um, I just wanted to add that, thank you. Thank you. With that, the meeting is over. We'll be voting on you next week. Thank you so much.